What's good, Big Pimpin'? Your main fro, Afro Cell, is back again. And despite the ups and downs, I am still supporting my city. I don't know, I, I don't know who number that is. Now, I told you in the past that we don't hit spin moves, I lied. Zone 100 and Master Cell is our town just right now. However, like how he hit the manga that one time, we wanted to come with you guys with some Zone 100 greatness, because at the end of the day, that is what it is. However, we have to keep in mind what Zone 100 truly is. A giant cock tease. More delays than a motherfucker. It's like a bad trip at the airport. DMV, the anime, let me stop. Now when it comes to Zone 100, there ain't too much that can actually be said about this show that Master Cell hasn't already said in his very lengthy episode reviews. However, despite being on episode 7, it feels like we hit a bit- Is that, is that the trip on the hotline? Can't do it. It feels like we reached a halfway point in this show. And for a lot of people, that really just ends up meaning that we feel this way because of certain Shizuka Mizuki Kaz joined the crew, then so be it. Mind you, from episode 2, this has been a long time coming. So we're going by One Piece live action standards, when it comes to people eventually joining Nintendo on his journey, she was there before Kenjo even was, so even if it took her a while, she really is the first crewmate. Actually, nah, because the first crewmate on One Piece is Zoro, and even though Nami was in episode 1, that depends how you look at it. But this is some things about Zone 100 that kind of just, the way it went about its story as well, is kind of just different from a lot of zombie apocalypse shows go. Which isn't too hard to understand because, quite frankly, the show made a plot point about watching zombie movies beforehand. Like if a show's going out of its way to not be like other shows it's referencing, what can you do? About the 100 movies. But something I actually want to highlight right quick is actually how quick things are happening. Mind you, when we got to the visual last part that we did, the two episode part, episode 6 and 7, we reached a point where it kind of felt like our main three was the last people left alive. The whole city just got destroyed, like, right when Nintendo was first running for everybody. Freaking cities, roads crowded with zombies. Freaking planes flying out the air. Zombies just mm, crash after crash after crash. Cars, bus, trains, planes. Oh. Despite people like that blonde movie star dude actually being shown alive at the end of a zombie attack. And the end of episode 5 where that main group that almost killed Shizuka was still alive at the end of it. Very much unlike all flight attendants. At the start of 6 he was just like, you know, the water supply is down, you look around, zombies is increasing everywhere, we ain't got no electricity. Is anybody dead? Like, are we the only ones left in the city? <laughs> we take this seriously now? <laughs> There's been kinds of conflicts between people in Zombie Apocalypse, this team versus that team, or this team trying to take over or screw over that team. It took us a while to do that. I know the whole Zombie Apocalypse thing has been going on for decades, if not a fucking century. I don't fucking <laughs> you can argue that it took Zombie 100 long to have a conflict like that. However, that simply wasn't the focus. And the point of Zombie 100 is really just in the actual title, Zombie 100, Bucket List of the Dead. Nintendo has a hundred things he's gonna put on a list that he's gonna do before getting turned into a zombie. Living his life out to the fullest during the zombie apocalypse because he wasn't even doing a regular life. And his best friend Kenjo for the ride, who was actually added to that zombie bucket list. And now picking up Shizuka. And she had added something to that bucket list. Not necessarily for herself, but however, it is a deep growing still. We're almost at 40 now. Which is not a halfway point. At all. Now, mind you, that Zombie 100 manga is ongoing. And even at this point that we got to. The anime so far, when Master Cell was checking out the manga, he pretty much reached up to chapter 10 now. Since we got another 5 episodes, presumably we're going to get close to that chapter 20. Which means, I just remember manga that's like on chapter 50 something right now, but I haven't reached it halfway through what's already out. So unless this show does well enough to get the season 2 in the works, which I'm not sure how that's going to work with the way the production's been going. But the eventual thing, if, very if, if the eventual thing in this show is reaching those 100 things on the list before it can complete, damn. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's gonna take a while. And yeah, we still got somebody to introduce, right? Who knows? Maybe they got 60 things they want to do. <laughs> now, we know the way Zombie 100 conducts itself, and it's basically surrounded again by Tendo trying to, you know, do things he wants to do. And a big moment in the last episode when she's gonna basically came to her revelation, telling Tendo that he made her think differently because he was kind of in a spot similar to a spot that she was in in life, let alone at the point when she first met him. It does kind of make you wonder what does she want to do? What does Shizuka want to do, for real, if it's not risk management? <laughs> and despite being a superhero, Tendo already scratched that off his list. It's kind of like what's going on for real, right? <laughs> now, Kenjo has an overall goal, to be a stand-up comic. But these two, well, Shizuka might have a goal. I mean, she did want to be a doctor when she was younger. But that actually brings me to another thing. The end of the zombie apocalypse. 
Because the show is mentioning they might still touch up on, we are still in the conversations about possibly this being a huge virus. And it may be a group of people out there making a vaccine. Making a vaccine for the zombie apocalypse on paper seems dumb as hell, but you know, I mean, shit. Like we've said before, in a, <laughs> in a world where the dead always wins, whenever you enter zombie apocalypse stories, just going for a solution is, is, is just kind of a breath of <laughs> fresh air in itself. Put that on the bucket list. That would be a swerve if Suzuka does that. Like, he's like, hey, what you, what, what you want to put out, the, out of this bucket list? What you want to do? Solve this damn shit. Because, <laughs> you know, presumably Ken Jones' goal for being a stand-up com- comic can't actually happen unless the, zombie, the apocalypse is over. Unless we go, like, on, I guess, Attack on Titan type shit. Or Heavenly Delusion. Both of these shows failed at doing this. Trying to make an area, a utopia, if you will, where, I guess, it's outside the zombie apocalypse, outside of... Well, I guess a place where everybody can still live while there's a threat outside. Zombie Apocalypse show was feel like this as well. Hey, did you find relative? For those who know, you know. No, no, I'm talking about it. It makes more sense that this show does end at 100 things on the bucket list. At least then, you know, like... <laughs> you got a Zombie Apocalypse show that's about... <laughs> I, guess it's, I guess really what Zombie 100 is is more so what it's not about. Sometimes it's the things you don't do that make you who you are. Hey, Suzuka, don't take risks. That define her for a while. Kendo don't work. His new persona. <laughs> Kenjo don't wear clothes. Well, on a more serious note, when it comes to the Zombie 100, despite its delays, to be 100%, it has been one of my favorite shows this season. And I've compared the show the way it feels on me to Heavenly Delusion a couple of times. And the reason I say that is, once again, it's the type of show where it kind of just stays on the brain week to week. It's about the biggest heavy hitter of this season is more likely Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. And a lot of people is also talking about Homer and because, you know, I, I know I said her name wrong, Homer Mia. The second part of that, well, not even the second part, just the untold stories. And Red of Girlfriend Season 2. Those are shows we had before. Just, just saying it how it is. Those are sequels. And as great as those sequels are doing, time for those shows to be on my brain forever is already coming on. Zama 100 is a fresh show doing fresh things, but a lot of concepts in it that just circles around your brain forever and over, which is why it still takes 20 minutes to talk about us every episode. So much so that it makes me want to hit the manga just to see how they did it. Once again, like Heavy Delusion did. But there is another great show out there, two of the Go Hand specials, The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses, and The Mess for Cat is Depressed Again. When it comes to intricate shows that could just easily just wrap your head around for the entire time, the easy show to do that is on Dead Butter Force. But at the end of the day, Excluding season twos, as we tried to do, Zone 100 has indeed took that spot. At least for us. Even though it's not the best of the season whatsoever, because it only aired half the show during it. At the end of the year, we're talking about it. But the summer, by default, nah. <laughs> to be fair, Jesus Kaiser didn't either. The first shows of the fall is actually starting at the end of September instead of the first of October. And yet you guys only did half your shows. Come on. But that's it, y'all. Just a quick more thoughts about Zone 100. Classic. And we're gonna get out of here. If you watch this video, leave me a comment on what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, spin moves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Africa in the boot!